Hello, my name is Shane Cuthbert and welcome to your very first free online session. Thank you for joining me. It's great to have you here. This is where you get more of a feel for me, some personal counseling and some one-on-one -on -one personal coaching. But I must warn you, we're going to get interactive, as interactive as we possibly can. And there's a reason for this. The reason why we're going to make this experience as interactive as we possibly can is because I believe that the best learning happens experientially. Okay, there is only so much we can learn through explanation alone. Watching videos, listening to people talking, being told what to do, and reading. In fact, I believe that if you think back to a time in your life where you learnt the most powerful lesson. I'm sure you'll find that that happened experientially through your own personal experience. Not just from what you were told or what is explained to you by a parent or a teacher. To be honest, the most effective teachers are not just those that can share knowledge, but the ones that can give you the experience with that knowledge so that you can actually apply what you have learnt to a real life situation. And that's what we're going to do. So moving forward with experiential learning as our main goal, I'm going to ask you to participate at certain points throughout this lesson. I may ask you to recall or remember certain events uh, or experiences in your past. I may even ask you to think about things in a particular way. And this is really important. And I'll tell you why. The problems that we have are there because of the thinking that we have. So in order to change those problems that we have, we need to change the thinking that we have. So I may ask you to think about things in a completely different way than you've ever sort of thought of before. And that's fine. It's gonna feel weird, but it's going to be great. Because if you can do that, if you can do what I ask you to do, and you can play along, you're going to get the most out of this series. Now you can see me and I can't see you, so I have no idea whether you're playing along, whether you're pausing the videos, whether you're thinking, whether you're not thinking, you might be doing the dishes with the video on in the background, I've got no idea. But I promise you that you're going to get the most out of this if you do participate, and participate to the fullest extent that you can. Now, if you're going to sit through these videos and you're going to watch them all anyway, if, if you've paid money and you've signed up to this course, you might as well get bang for your buck and give it a red hot crack. So, are you ready for the first exercise? I want you to take a moment and think about a struggle you have had recently, something that has made you really, really stretch yourself, something that you've had to put a lot of hard work into, something because you wanted to achieve a particular goal. Now that's going to be different for everybody. It may be weight loss or a relationship. Um, it could be learning the guitar or the piano. Uh, the particular struggle is going to be different for everybody, but I'd like you to just take a moment and think about that struggle. Now, maybe nobody around you recognised or totally understood this particular struggle that you went through, uh, but you worked really hard, you had a great outcome, and you got there and had a great result anyway. Now I want you to think about when you got that great outcome, how great that felt. And I want you to think about how you congratulated yourself. I don't mean what you did. I don't mean did you go to the bottle shop or the liquor store uh, to congratulate yourself. Um, I don't mean your actions so much as I wanna know what your thoughts were. What was happening in your own mind? How did you congratulate yourself in your own mind? What thoughts did you think? What feelings did you allow yourself to experience? 
And what did you communicate to yourself within to say, well done, you did a great job, awesome. The thing is that everybody congratulates themselves in different ways. And it's really important uh, for you to think about how you do that process of congratulating yourself. Now, if you have got to the point where you have had to reach out for help, if you have had to ask someone for help, then something is terribly wrong. And we're going to change that. Seeking help from a counsellor or a therapist, even a friend or, you know, a relative, it's not like going to the shopping centre and comparing, you know, different types of fruit, uh, comparing prices. It's not that easy. Uh, it's very difficult. And for some of us that are in this situation, uh, for you guys watching this video, uh, we've gotten to that point where we've had to say, we need help, but it's hard. And I'd like you to really just take a moment and congratulate yourself for being here. You're not here for me, you're not here for anybody else other than yourself. And you're here because you need to be here. People don't wake up one day uh, and ask for help. Uh, my guess is it's probably been something that's been on your mind for a long time, something you've been thinking about. Perhaps you've been watching my videos. Perhaps you've been watching other people's videos. Um, getting yourself ready uh, to get to this point. Because nobody gets to this point uh, just by clicking their fingers. The decision for change is a process. And it's a process that started somewhere else. And the process has brought you here. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. And here's the secret. I think the number one mistake that most people make is that they want all these fireworks. They want big results. Uh, they want to wake up tomorrow having completed all their goals, and ticking all the boxes. But the reality is that it doesn't just work that way. We fail to accept the reality that big changes are actually the accumulation of all the small steps put together. A pyramid is one of the seven wonders of the world. But a pyramid is just a bunch of steps, right? Here's another secret. It's always the big uncomfortable steps which are the most powerful ones. It's the moments where you didn't have to do something, but you did it anyway. They're the breakthroughs. They're the things you had to work for. You had to sweat it out. They are the most rewarding steps. The mistake that most people make is that they completely overlook that. Most people wait until they get the big gigantic outcomes that they can see with their own eyes before they give themselves permission to reward themselves. It's a perfectly healthy, natural, normal thing to seek others' approval. We want people to recognise our struggles and what we've been through. and We naturally want to be congratulated for our achievements as well. That's all part of being human. The problem though is that we need to seek approval from the world around us too much. Some people need to be seen with the right people, wear the same clothes, uh, drive nice cars, overextend their mortgage to live in a bigger house. Uh, a lot of people this day and age are worried about um, having the right comments on their profiles. Uh, they're worried about how many likes they get. And that's the problem. We are all guilty of doing this in our own way. I do it, my partner does it, my friends do it. Everybody does it. There's nothing wrong with seeking approval from others. So long as we understand the importance of balancing uh, the approval from the outside world with the ability to give ourselves approval. It's a very commonly overlooked but important skill to have. When I ask you to give yourself permission 
to congratulate yourself for being here or to give yourself a pat on the back for taking the first step towards seeking help. How does that feel? If you're like most people, it probably feels unnatural. It probably feels awkward. It probably just feels totally weird. Most people would actually say something like, yeah, but I haven't actually done anything yet. What am I congratulating myself for? I'm here watching this video, watching this guy talk crap. I haven't done anything. Do you know what that person's doing? They're looking at the pyramid. They're looking at the pyramid, the invisible pyramid that they haven't built yet. But what you've built is the step, the first step. The first step is built. And I'd like you to recognize that. Now, if you're feeling like, well, most people, and you're feeling like you haven't built a pyramid yet, then this is something that I'd like to demonstrate. Now I'm going to ask you to get interactive with me again. I want you to go back in time. I want you to think about a time in your life uh, when you were obviously a lot younger, 10 or 15 years ago. And I want you to think about a problem that you once had, but don't anymore. So I want you to think of a problem that had you feeling stuck, something that you believed at the time you'd never be able to do. And this particular thing, uh, which now you are able to do, doesn't matter too much about the specific problem, only that it's something you can definitely do now that you never thought you could do in the past. Once you identify that problem, this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to imagine that you could go back in a time machine and go back to visit your younger self. At this point, the catch is that you're not allowed to reveal to your younger self that it's you they are talking to. They don't know you're from the future and you must appear to them as a stranger. You get to sit down and talk with your younger self for a few hours at most. As far as they are aware, you're just some person giving them a message. What I'd like you to think about is what you could tell them in that conversation that would help them understand or persuade them to believe that they actually can do that thing they believe they cannot do. What could you say to them? Exactly what do they need to hear so that they know that they can do this thing? Now, if you'd like to take a moment uh, to think about this, you can pause the video at any time. Uh, take a few moments to, by all means, think about this question. After that, I wanna ask you, in all honesty, do you think your younger self is going to believe everything you've, you've told them? Do you actually think your younger self is going to listen to what you have to say and go, oh, ha, huh. oh, that's the answer. That's the thing I've, oh, thank you. You saved me, you helped me. Oh, I, I can do that thing now. Truth is, it's highly unlikely. Whilst it's normal to want people's approval, it's important to balance that need by learning how to give ourselves approval. Praise, recognition, and congratulations. Looking for a therapist, a counselor, or a personal coach, someone to help you is not an easy decision. So take a moment to congratulate yourself for having the courage to take this and every additional step along the way, especially the more uncomfortable ones. Learning to do this creates momentum to put all the little steps together to create the change you've come here seeking. It may feel totally unusual at first, and that's perfectly natural. It's normal for our mind to be resistant to change. But in the following videos, I will show you some simple tricks to speed up the process 
by breaking through that resistance. So as long as you play along and be sure to make this an interactive experience, by the time you've worked your way through these lessons learnt here today, some of those changes will have already started to fall into place.